welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are playing a an Esper uh, deck built around Dovin's Acuity and Mastermind's Acquisition. Some of you may remember this deck from the previous format, but I haven't seen many people playing it since the Mythic Invitational, where it was considered a pretty strong best of one deck, but most of the pros have moved on from best of one to do more best of three stuff, but there still is a best of one ladder that you can rank up to Mythic with. And this deck got a few interesting additions with War of the Spark. In the main deck, the card is Teferi Time Raveler. In the past, the toughest thing was when you went up against anybody with counter spells and they countered all your masterminds acquisitions the deck was just missing a huge amount of its flavor but with the fairy time raveler you can shut down counter spells plus most opponents because of the power of this card have stopped running counter spells almost entirely making more room for masterminds acquisitions flexibility to play off pay off and now in the sideboard we also have a number of new Masterminds Acquisition options. My favorite being the Elder Spell. Against the Planeswalker decks out there, Masterminds Acquisition for the Elder Spell is only a 6-mana pair of cards that can wipe out all of the Planeswalkers on the opponent's side of the board. We also have a main deck Immortal Sun for that too, even though we run Teferi Time Raveler. That's because, after you've used the Minus, Teferi Time Raveler's power is mostly in the static, so the, plane, the Immortal Sun shutting it down isn't that bad. Then we also have some other cards in the sideboard like Clear the Mind, Invoke the Divine. There's one Psychic Corrosion. This is actually our win con for the entire deck. A Cry of the Canarium, an Unmoored Ego, a Cleansing Nova. There are three Marari Conjectures. There's also Nezahal, the Primal Tide, if we don't think the Psychic Corrosion plan will work, and an Omniscience. So the way that the end game goes is we cast we use Marari's Conjecture to get back Masterminds Acquisition, and then we double our Masterminds Acquisition. At this point, we're probably on 8, 9 mana. We're, we're getting pretty high in mana at this point. When we double our Masterminds Acquisition, we go get an Omniscience, and we get a Clear the Mind, or not a Clear the Mind, a Psychic Corrosion. We put out the Psychic Corrosion so that every time we draw a card, the opponent mills two cards, and we play the Omniscience so that... Every time we play an instant, we can return the Dovin's acuities to our hands and replay them for free. Replaying them for free every time triggers the Psychic Corrosion and draws deeper into our deck, drawing more instants, letting us replay acuity over and over. Eventually, we usually hit another Masterminds acquisition, and then we go get a clear of the mind if we're running out of our own deck or just need to add more instants like Opt back into our deck to keep the acuity chain going. It's a pretty nauseating end to a game for those of you who hate combos that take a long time. But it's been very successful. On ladder yesterday, I went from about 95, 94%, something like that in Mythic, which is where I entered in, to a, somewhere around, I, I think I got into 800, 700, something like that. It's on Twitch, the exact numbers. I don't recall. I'm still a bit sick, and I was definitely sick yesterday playing the deck, which made for pretty funny viewing, I think, on Twitch. Well, maybe it was painful for the first two hours because I was playing very badly, but then the last couple hours playing this deck and just smashing everybody was a bit more, I think it was humorous to watch. Anyway, uh, that's a quick discussion of the deck. What to fetch when is largely about knowing your deck, knowing your matchup, and getting used to it. A good amount is just obvious, but when you're not sure what to fetch, go get the Mirari Conjecture and do it all over again. Let's have a look at that Mythic profile really quick. We're at 957 now. I know I was at least 800 or 700 or something. Let's see where we go today. All right. We have a hand that goes first and can play Dovin's Acuities, so we'll hang on to this. Some of the numbers in the deck are interesting, like four Vraska's Contempts is kind of a nod to all the Super Friends decks out there. Only three Kai's Wrath is kind of a scale back of creatures in general, plus we have ways to go get the Kai's Wrath in Mastermind's Acquisition if we are in a creature matchup. But the Dovin's Acuities also just let you see more of your deck. Black and white, black and white. Interesting. So, well, if our opponent's on Esper, it makes a lot of sense to drop the Time Raveler right away and make sure that the rest of our things can't get countered. But if our opponent is something else, I mean, they have these Narset Sleeves. It makes me think Esper Thoughts. It's tricky. At the same time, I don't want to play this and minus it to draw a card if there's no good target. I'm going to go for it. Let's fire off the Teferi. Let's plus... 
Let's make the opponent deal with that. If they do run counters. Aha. Our opponent has their own the their own Teferi. That's okay. I'm perfectly happy operating at sorcery speed. Let's use let's play the Dovin's Acuity. Alright. We have a land too. We can minus the Teferi, targeting the Dovin's Acuity, bring it back, draw an extra card, and play our land for the turn. It's okay, I don't want to cast off this turn very much either. I'd rather use it to get the Acuity back. So against Super Friends, it's very important that we hit our land drops so that we're able to do what we need to do when we need to do it. And it's very important to find Mastermind's Acquisition for the Elder Spell or the Immortal Sun. So those will be the priorities here. I'm not in a rush to remove this to fairy. The value it adds is pretty medium. I think I'd much rather get the acuity down and then consider opting to find land. We do need to hit our land drop this turn. Okay, we did. I can still use this opt, but I can't use it on my opponent's turn. So do I want to opt just to get back this acuity or save it for the future? I think I'll go digging. It's very important that we have the right cards at the right time, so getting even closer to a Mastermind's Acquisition here or making sure we hit our land drops is probably the best thing we can do. This Kaya's Wrath I don't anticipate being important. I don't really anticipate the Time Raveler being important either, but we'll drop it off. It can keep our opponent from instant speed thought erasing us with the Teferi. Speaking of Teferi... You know what? I'm not done yet. He's never done. Just just a hint about this guy. He's never done. Now, does this deck run Dovin's Veto? The latest versions of this kind of deck have not, so I'm going to fire off of Raska's Contempt right away. Remember, we can't play it at instant speed because of this Teferi. And we'll just keep hitting those land drops, and we're looking for those Mastermind's Acquisitions. The way that this deck can kill us out of nowhere is by having Teferi Hero of Dominaria on the field, and then using Elder Spell to kill Planeswalkers, and put enough loyalty on this Teferi so that it ultimates. All in one turn. Same thing with Liliana. Let's see what the opponent wants to take away from us. They have a good many options. They take the Vraska's Contempt, trying to clear the way for their next big Planeswalker for sure. Now, another card that absolutely wrecks us is Narset. I'm very happy to see the opponent didn't have the mana for Narset available. <laughs> it might be. So, until before Narset does show up, we want to draw as many cards as possible. An opt that's going to cost extra. Alright, keep it coming. We need to find Mastermind's Acquisition so the Elder Spell becomes available. Or the Immortal Sun, that's in the deck too. Oh no. Oh no. Well, we pretty much have to draw perfect now. We're in a lot of trouble. The opponents, I think they're missing land 6, but they're not drawing with the Teferi. It's not very good. Let's see. I could play this on the upkeep to get a score. No, I can't. I can't play anything at instant speed. Well, we'll put out the Time Raveler just for the sake of having something, but using it to draw a card right now is an absolute fail. It's not going to work. We can use this just for the Scry and to bounce the Acuities, but they're, they don't draw cards. I feel like I just need to get the Scry, though. I know that's not going to draw me a card, but we can get these back in our hand in case there's some cleansing Nova or something, and we can dig. No reason to play the Acuities now, of course, since we can't draw the card. Where are those Masterminds? We need them badly. It's one of those things where there's no point in giving up. The opponent's not pressuring us yet. Um, you can have this cast down. Congratulations. Keeping the opponent off that land drop so that the Liliana doesn't start pressuring us is a big deal. Trying to buy extra turns. Is it the Elder Spell? Is it Teferi? It's Teferi. Little Teferi, though. That's okay. That's not it. We'll be sitting over here doing nothing, drawing one card a turn, hoping for the best. 
being a third of our way through our deck without the key cards that we need is very obnoxious, but at least our opponent isn't finding a crafty way to kill us. You may want to find that 2x speed button. For those who don't know, click the gear on YouTube under settings and look at speed. You can go to 1.5 or 2x. You may want to do it because all we're going to be doing is drawing cards off the top and trying to find the right card. Our opponent goes with an Elder Spell. I think that's a serious waste of an Elder Spell, but perhaps the plan is to try to trap us with Thought Erasures so that we can't draw the right card off the top. The opponent gets back the land so they can start the Liliana thing, but think about it. If they had played the Liliana, the next turn Elder Spell and some of their own Planeswalkers could ultimate Liliana, and there's no way I could win. Maybe they have another Elder Spell, and that's what makes this work. It's possible. There's a Vraska's Contempt. We have to get rid of the Narset. Narset's what matters. So that we can draw deeper into our deck and get the right cards. Alright. <laughs> Not the right card yet. Our opponent goes for Liliana. This is okay. It gives us a target to replay the Acuities. Karn keeps going. You can have this land that shocks you if you play it untapped. Not that I think life total will matter very much. Anybody else? We done? All right. Boom. Let's see if our opponent came prepared for this. Um, let's see. We can play this, let the opponent draw a card, and get our acuity back. Unless there's a scoop coming to the main deck, Immortal Sun. Perfectly fine with the opponent drawing cards here. We might even just have to deck them at some point, but we'll see. Now what do you do? Did you add a D-Spark or something to get rid of an Immortal Sun to your deck? The base lists of these with a sideboard, like if, if they didn't make adjustments for best of one, have no way to deal with the Immortal Sun. All right. Well, they haven't conceded yet. Um, so for my version of this deck, I try to run a D-Spark or a Cleansing Nova. They kept on top. It could have a thing. Okay. Nice play. Let's play the Acuity. Come on, Mastermind's Acquisition. Where are you? And play a land and say go. Not a lot else to do here. A little bit of lag from the epicness going on, I suppose. <laughs> I want, you see, our opponent keeps touching their planeswalkers. Well, you kept on top. It surely must be something useful. Is it a thought erasure during my draw step? No, it's not. Right? Tap land. Let the party continue. I'm trying to. Huh. Uh, I wonder if the opponent has full control mode on or what's sticking so much. Every land I play now is like really slowing down the game. Hmm. I think the opponent is hacking me out of rage. Trying to remove the immortal sun from my battlefield. Wow, the Thought Erasures took their time showing up, didn't they? The Fairy Time Ravelers, Oath of Kaya, Cry of the Canarium. Um, it doesn't really matter what we take very much. I guess I can take more of these mentors. Oh, there we go. There we go. And since their hand isn't anything I'm concerned about, we'll hold on to this Thought Erasure. What are we going to Mastermind for? I think the Mirari Conjecture and set up a double Mastermind into our win cons. Here's to Fairy do nothing. If you show remorse, I'll show we also could get an Elder Spell and set our opponent all the way back to ground zero, which I'm sure many of you would enjoy. My line does involve a lot of relying on the Immortal Sun. Hmm. 
this many cards left in the deck, we could also just get Nezahal and have it start smashing the opponent. Which, you know, that's an option. I think I like the conjecture plan, though. Just set up the conjecture for our win cons. Try to ignore all their nonsense. Can, let's see, you can get back... We could get back an Opt. We could also get back a Vraska's Contempt. And just take the Teferi out so if the opponent can remove the Immortal Sun, they don't go absolutely bonkers and beat us. But I'm trying to set up the win cons, so I'll take the Opt. Um, let's see, we may as well curate the top of our deck for a minute. Grab some of these Planeswalkers, we can bend this land. We have the mana for the Omniscience uh, Psychic Corrosion combo. So I'm just going to hold the Opt. I sort of want to play my own Teferi to stop the full control mode, like to see if that stops the full control mode stick that we seem to have going on. Opponent draws off the top. They don't get anything, it appears. Immortal Sun triggers. Get back the Mastermind's Acquisition. Play this land tapped. Thought erase you again, because why not? All the Oath of Kaya. And Kaya's Wrath, not an important card here. So I'm holding the Opt so that it can work when we go get the Omniscience and set everything off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this has a reduced cost, so does Omniscience because of the Immortal Sun, so next turn should be it. Or at least it could be it. We do still need to draw a little well. Like we need to draw a few more Acuities. There's, an, there's one. All right, so the doubling effect occurs. Get ready to watch the show, or at least until the opponent concedes. We double our Mastermind's acquisitions. We go get Omniscience. And we go get... Where did it go? Psychic Corrosion. Cast the Omniscience. Pay, paying only nine for it because of the Immortal Sun. What a bargain. Here's Psychic Corrosion. Here's another Dovin Security, and let the train begin. I know our deck is pretty low, but it's going to be okay. We can go get Clear the Mind and shuffle it right back in as soon as we find another Mastermind's Acquisition. There should be at least two more still in the deck. And this is where we can play Opt, get the acquisitions back for free, play them again, and keep drawing as much as we need to to get the job done. So again, you might want to reach for the 2x speed button, the gear on your YouTube browser, the little gear speed 2x. It's a tip a lot of people have told me they never knew about, but it comes in handy for moments like this. To the bottom with you. Get the oh, there goes their elder spell. All right, keep it coming. I really just want to find another Teferi to play for free, just to keep the opponent from holding up the game. Come on, let's do it. Goes their Narset. Keep it coming. Oh man, opponents really holding on to this victory. They they don't want to let it go. I've doubled their life. I have basically endless play. There's a mastermind. We can go get a clear of the mind. How many Teferis are down here? One, two, three. That's why we can't find one. Let's go for outside the game. We'll get double clear of the mind so we can't deck. Which I don't think we actually need, but it's good to show you. Um, it's good to show you guys at home how it works. 
And there it is. There it is. We, all, we could also get an Elder Spell to kill our opponents to Fairy that's holding up the stack. And that's an idea too. One of the pains with this deck is often even when you win, if it takes too long, you don't rank up much because the ranks change while you're winning. Okay, pretty good curve. Just need a white source and it's very ideal against all kinds of decks. So let's go. Against mono red, we'll be on the back foot, but that's normal. Okay, interesting. Lots of things with Breeding Pool in it right now, from Bant to Blue-Green Steal Your Stuff to some kind of a Tron Hydroid Crisis deck. What are you? All right, it's a Steal Your Stuff deck. Um, there's a lot of annoying cards here, but the Teferi shuts down the Frilled Mystic. The chemist's insight becomes awkward, and this doesn't have a target. So that means it's Hydroid Crassus or Nissa who shakes the world. Nissa who shakes the world is a lot of power. The Crassus isn't dangerous until a lot of lands come up, so I'm gonna take the Nissa who shakes the world. She scurs me. Uh, keeping a fifth land, I think, at this point is unnecessary. There's a land and a pass. Another Thought Erasure off the top. So I like getting the Teferi down because that takes away the Frilled Mystic's ability to mess with me. And we'll go ahead and plus and try to leave this Teferi on the battlefield. We'll minus it when our opponent does play the Mystic or something. Like they might just cast the Mystic here hoping to attack the Teferi. We can bounce it and draw a card, buy ourselves more time. Instead, it's a main phase chemistry's insight, which is fine. Thought Erasure can get up in there twice. So, two Frilled Mystics, a Llanowar Elf, and a Hydroid Crassus. We'll take the Crassus. Ooh, a Conjecture. We don't have another instant yet, but we have an Opt. This seems like a really good keep, actually. I don't feel like I need to... Hmm. We'll keep plussing you because we can minus you to draw after our opponent plays one of their creatures. We'll play this tapped. I don't feel any need to Thought Erasure this hand right now. I'll wait till after my opponent casts their next Chemister's Insight. And to not hold up priority, I'll just take this into my hand now. And we'll see if we draw that fifth land. But being able to keep hitting the opponents with Thought Erasures and keep having ops going seems good. All right, the opponent cast the Frilled Mystic, makes sense. Let's go ahead and set the Mystic back. Might be, a bad idea. Might be a bad idea indeed. But as long as we can keep one of our Teferis on the battlefield, it should be pretty safe. And then we'll play the Conjecture. Get back the Opt, get the value going. And then hopefully we'll just use our double Thought Erasures on the Conjecture turn and erase our opponent's whole hand. If they play out another creature this turn, we can Kai's Wrath. So the idea will be plus this to three next turn, then the next turn minus it and bounce this and kill our opponent's whole hand. So Thought Erasure comes back, but we can save that till next turn. When it'll hit four cards? Actually, we might just want to spend one this turn. Well, we're definitely going to Wrath you. We could have done that at instant speed with Teferi. Maybe that would have been 100% right. Let's see, our opponent draws, play, play. I guess I should make sure they don't get to play that Mystic. And Moment of Craving seems unnecessary now that we've taken their creatures away. I always for I, I don't always forget, but I often forget that I could play Kaya's Wrath at instant speed, which would have surely been a better line that time. Mass Manipulation steals the Teferi. Are you suiciding the Teferi to bounce the Conjecture? Because I'll do this all over again. I'm down with that. All right. I also don't need to play at instant speed. I'm perfectly fine playing at sorcery speed. All right, we've got dubs. I think I'll play... 
think first off, I'm going to play the acuity though and just double opt and get it back. Another opt is good. More double opting. Um, I'm actually going to decline since I can't play it right now and I don't want to have too many. I'll take that. I don't have too many cards in my hand at the end of this turn. It's going to be close. Actually, oops. I meant to pull that back, not to put it in tapped. My bad. Well, in that case, a thought erasure for a melody does nothing. I may as well opt. I meant to do both the thought erasure and the opt. Oopsies. Mistakes were made. Hmm. The opponent's not going to be, be playing Planeswalkers of their own, but do I just want my own personal Howling Mine when my opponent has nothing going on? Plus, they're the one with a Planeswalker right now. I mean, their plan is to steal my Planeswalkers. They run Nissa, who shakes the world, right? So it's got to be pretty good. And, oh my. I am set up now. I got the toys. All the toys. Mass manipulation does not steal an artifact. I wonder what the opponent does have that messes with an artifact. Anything? They've got two cards. What do they do with them? They've already used two frilled mystics. How many frilled mystics will they have? Well, not this one. Got Eternal Kefnet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, Kefnet could be a real pain. I I love getting down the Immortal Sun here, but perhaps it is wise to set the Kefnet back. So first, let's play Dovin's Acuity. There's a Thought Erasure. Let's play you. That means that we gain five total life on the Teferi. Take that action. We may as well get it off the board. Not let the opponent keep doing stuff at instant speed. And now that we have five life for the turn, we can get rid of the Kefnet with Nightmare's Thirst. The opponent can put it back in the deck two from the top. We'll see if they have a Chemist's Insight to just recast it right away. If they do, if they get back to it this turn, we can Teferi. All right, we know a card in their hand is not a land because they didn't put it onto the battlefield with the Growth Spiral. Here's a Lanoir Elf. All right, what are you? Let's try to resolve the Time Raveler. Because if Time Raveler comes down, the opponent can't interact with us at instant speed. And it also checks for a Frilled Mystic. All right. Plus, let's put a stop in our opponent's draw step so we can Thought Erasure away their Kefnet. And let's go ahead and play out one of our acuities. Cast down. Not bad. Let the opponent draw their card and cast Thought Erasure. And we see a Hydroid Crassus and a Kefnet. I'm taking the Crassus. I think the opponent's slow roll there was a little bit greedy when they could have played that Crassus. I mean, I'm a... I'm not very afraid of Kefnet. I can bounce it and Thought Erase it here. Like so. Now we can't play our ins our sorceries at instant speed this time. So we may as well cast it now. Because we didn't plus our Teferi. Alright, that's gone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we can play the Immortal Sun and things get really ugly. And that will do it. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a lot of early interaction if our opponent's playing red or white. We've got a Thought Erasure. We've got Dovin's Acuity. We just need to hit our land, which will probably be the challenge this game. If we're against like an Esper Planeswalkers deck or anything of that nature, we're in a lot of trouble. Looks like Grixis. So let's see. Yep, Grixis it is. Oh my goodness. We're in a lot of trouble. Um... I mean, I feel like I have to take the Thought Erasure. 
Bedevil taking out Immortal Sun, like this is a tough matchup. Uh, no, what, no way around that. And these removal cards are going to be horrible. So I could let my opponent thought erase my hand, but then I lose my Dovin's Acuity, which is about the only thing I have going to get deeper in the deck. Plus there's just kind of a code. You have to thought erase, thought erasure. It's too good. The card is too good. Fortunate to find land number three, but we're going to have to find a lot more than that to be competitive. All right, land, land. Good. Bolus is coming down. Hmm. Because of the B Devil, I wonder if I just want to discard the Immortal Sun. Next turn, I can Nightmare's Thirst, get this back, play it again, Nightmare's Thirst again. Yeah, we'll just get rid of the Moment of Craving in that case. No, I'm just trying to... Okay, hit Resolve, then pick. Silly me. Hmm. All right, I'm sticking to my line. It's quite the value our opponent's getting off their bolus. But these cards are mostly useless anyway, to be honest. Get it back. Get him out of there. And other bolus. Arrgh. So wrecked. Alright, Kai's Wrath, get out of here. Top decked. But does the opponent already have another? That's the question. What you hope is that their hand from this point is a ton of land and a ton of dorks, but they usually run eight bolus and... Jesus, oh, Pete's. Let's see what we can find here. I'd normally keep this, but I need to draw really perfect to compete here. I'm gonna get rid of the Immortal Sun because of the Bedevil. Bedevil just kills it, so it's no, it's not use, it's not useful. Oh, or is it? Did I do it wrong? I'm sure the opponent has a lot of Bedevils though. Like this also gets it. Sacrifice an artifact, right? Okay, take you. Wow, did their hand ever turn up looking good. They are looking good. Bolus on bolus on bolus. They drew five boluses. Five boli. I have enough black that I could pull Elder Spell. That's about the only hope. Uh-huh. Whoo! That'll do it for the Elder Spell for this, but then the opponent will flip the bolus and get it back. What I guess I have to hope is that my opponent does not Thought Erase me. If they don't Thought Erase me, and they know I know about the Thought Erasure, so this is such a gambit, but I really want my opponent to flip their bolus. We have to get rid of the Acuity because we need all six lands. Since the opponent knows I know about the Thought Erasure, there's a chance they'll go for this. Hit you, flip my bolus. We can mastermind the Elder spell. Our opponent's checking our graveyard. You won't find anything. But... You can just draw two cards. That doesn't seem terrible. And they're going for it. No! Or they could do that. Sadness. We drew it a card too late. Alright. Pick that up. Draw a card. Fight back, fight back! Another Teferi. We'll have to draw another Masterminds Acquisition. The gamble didn't pay off. I thought the opponent would just draw two cards rather than get a Bolus back to another dragon, but I was foolish. I was... I, we were all deceived, but I think I took the shot I had to take. 
I don't think I had much choice there. Just get rid of the Teferi. Your schemes indeed are never ending. I think we can call this one a game, you guys. I think that's fair. I think it's fair to say we got buried. We found the Achilles heel of the deck. Well, that was an interesting run. I didn't play against an aggro deck all day. And if aggro is not very popular and all the decks are mid-rangey and trying to go over the top of each other without counter spells, maybe this deck is well positioned since it has flexibility, a sideboard, and a combo kill. Um, Grixis was a really tough matchup. I wouldn't recommend playing much of that if you can avoid it. Oh my gosh, what a headache. But uh, the deck is very fun. I hope that you'll try it and uh, very enjoyable. So going to leave it there. Please check out hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com for some sweet Magic the Gathering Father's Day gift items. Uh, grads, maybe you got a graduate who plays Magic the Gathering as well who would enjoy it. So check those places out and please use the promo code CGB for 10% off at both places, flipsidegaming.com and hauntedflower.com. When you do, it supports the channel at the same time. Thank you for watching this video and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>